G'day guys, how you doing? It's Lawrence, aka The Kiwi, back with another video. And I feel that we need to talk about this elephant in the room. It needs to be brought to people's attention more than what it is right now. There's not a lot being talked about or spoken about or reported about this particular subject. And when I mean it's an elephant in the room, it's an elephant, massive elephant in the room. And when it, when it came across, when I was told about this July last year, I was just like, <laughs> oh my God, I never ever thought about this subject in any way, shape or form. I was driving back down from California, sorry, I was driving back down from Washington to California. I was talking to a good friend of mine, I've known known this individual for, um, shit, 23 years now. And she's absolutely brilliant. She's a mathematical genius. She's got a degree in computer digital science. She works in the digital AI research field. Um, extremely, extremely intelligent individual. While I was passing through San Francisco, I was on the phone with her. She lives um, on the other side of the United States. And I was talking about all the Tesla electric vehicles on the road and how these vehicles are going to be consuming a huge amount of electricity over the ensuing years. And we don't have the power grid to support this stuff. And she started laughing and said, well, that's the tip of the iceberg. And I was, I was like, what, what do you mean that's the tip of the iceberg? She goes, we're going to be running out of electricity, period, by 2050. I was like, what do you mean we're going to be running out of electricity by 2050? She goes, at the rate we're storing data, all these, all these organizations that are storing data, she said, this data takes massive amounts of energy to store. And she goes, at the current rate that we're utilizing and storing data, she goes, just in the United States alone, the power supply or the power that is produced in the United States currently is not going to be enough to support just data storage by 2050. I was like, well, what are you talking about? I, 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 I was dumbfounded. I said, what are you, really? She goes, yeah. She goes, I did a thesis on this a few years ago. And she said, there's no way. There is absolutely no way that we can keep on going down the path that we're going down. She says the electric vehicles are the least of our problems. She goes, it's data. And I, I was just like, she goes, think about it for a minute, Lawrence. Think about the cloud. She goes, everybody thinks about this cloud being this mystical, magical thing that's in the middle of nowhere that uses no energy or anything like that. She goes, the cloud is huge industrial facilities or huge buildings with thousands, thousands upon thousands of servers that are running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And she says they use a huge amount of electricity. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I'd never thought about this. So I started digging into this subject more and more and more. And Lo and behold, f firstly, firstly, the information out there in regards to this subject is really thin on the ground. It's like the UN, the WEF, global governments, all these organizations don't want you knowing about this in any way, shape or form. And the whole fact that we're going to wind and solar power is like a stopgap measure to try to get us ourselves off the grid to take less demand off the power grid so they have more energy to put towards actual this this data storage all all this data and information like they are storing data at such an incredible level it's mind-blowing so the fact that You've got all these people that are out there wanting, you know, all this tracer technology. They're wanting digital currencies. They're wanting all this stuff. We don't have the infrastructure for it. The only countries that have the infrastructure for this stuff are countries that are going to nuke power. That's why China right now, China right now is pouring so much time, money and energy into 
energy, like legitimate power supply, like, you know, nuclear power stations, um, huge, huge hydro dam facilities. It's why New Zealand, the majority of data that New Zealanders utilize right now is stored in China because China is one of the major power players on the face of the earth in regards to this data storage. Um, the U.S. government itself is utilizing data storage now in Israel. And genuinely, Western society is going to start really experiencing and is already experiencing power supply shortages. Like just here in California, for argument's sake, just this last summer, we had multiple power outages. And the reason we had these multiple power outages was primarily because of the fact that people were plugging in their electric vehicles. Just in this little street, this little group of townhouses where I live right now, there's half a dozen Teslas and they're all plugged in every night. You see them blinking away and doing their thing. Well, during the summertime, this last summer, the power was constantly going out right here constantly going out. My neighbors right here, they're actually putting a solar battery power bank into their place because of the power outages this last summer. They're like, this, this is going to get worse. And interestingly enough, the lady that lives next door, she worked for the same company that I had contracted out to a number of times that specialize in building electric vehicles. So both her and I understand certain aspects of, of what's going on here. But as far as the data storage stuff, that one had never crossed my mind. Because these things here, these little magic black boxes, these little dealios here, we jump on them, we use Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, like right now, and we don't give a second thought to everything that we do on this. But everything that we do on these phones, Every single piece of data is stored. You, even though you might turn off your navigation apps and all the different stuff, so you're not storing the data, they're, they're still storing the data. And, and I've proven that, like when in New Zealand, when everybody was downloading the Tracer app, I was telling people, it's like they've already got access to your data. And I know this, I was around individuals that worked for the DEA for about four or five years in early 2000. And I know for a fact that they store all, they were storing all your data as far back as early 2000. So all this stuff that we've got going on right now, this has been going on for the past easy 20, 25 years. And the monster is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And when these monsters, this data storage monster is getting to the point where it's at right now, it's, it's, it's going to get out of hand. It's genuinely going to get out of hand. And the funny thing was, was after talking with this individual, I'm driving south of San Francisco, and I look over in the hills as we're going past where Silicon Valley is, and you can see these huge, huge, huge high-tension power lines electricity supply lines running over the hills down into Silicon Valley. And I was just like, oh my gosh, my friend is so right. I mean, where I'm originally from in New Zealand at the top of the South Island, we used to, we had these high tension lines that would run through our town that would drop down into the Cook Strait and then go up into the North Island. And these huge high tension power lines supply a good majority of electricity to one half of a country, one half of New Zealand's population. And even New Zealand right now, its power supply is being absolutely tapped to an absolute maximum. And when you see that these high tension power lines are running a small nation, half of a small nation, and you see the same high tension lines running into an area like Silicon Valley that doesn't have anywhere near the population of what the North Island of New Zealand did back in the early 90s, but it's the data storage. Then you go to Las Vegas, Nevada, there's huge, hugely massive data storage facilities in, in Nevada. There's huge data storage facilities in Arizona. 
And this is the reason why the Hoover Dam water level is dropping. That's telling you it's all about climate change. They're telling you all this stuff is, oh, it's because of climate change, climate change. No, the draw on electricity now is growing so extramentally that they're running the turbines more than what they usually would have done, say, back in the early 90s, mid 90s and even the late 90s. That is literally why the water level of the Hoover Dam is dropping faster than it ever has done before. They're, they're consuming colossal amounts of electricity. And these globalists are trying to tell you and me that those wind power is going to be the savings grace, that the solar power is going to be the savings grace. None of this stuff's going to work. None of it. It's just been proven just recently in Texas when they had a huge winter storm about a year ago in Houston. The power grid went down and wind and solar wasn't able to, wasn't able to do the job in any way, shape or form. They didn't have electricity for days. And this is, as, as this individual told me, she goes, even though we'll be tapped out by 2050 in regards to all this energy supply just for data storage in the United States alone, she said by 2030, it's going to start causing major problems around the United States. And I said, well, what, what's the remedy for this? She goes, the governments, the state governments and the federal governments need to stop implementing these asinine you know, globalist agendas for carbon zero and all this sort of BS. Like up in Washington State right now, they're, they're taking hydro dams offline. It's just, it, it's mind-numbing. These individuals, at the rate they're going, they're going to push Western society back into the dark ages. It's just mind-numbing to me. Absolutely mind-numbing. And like I said, it's already, it's being proven right now that wind and solar is not meeting the demands. The reality of the situation is they're wanting to keep the energy that is being utilized right now for their needs. When you think about the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, the DEA, the D Department of Defense, the different governments, the banks, the social media platforms, when every, everything is storing data today. Everything. That's storing every text message you send. That's storing every comment that you make. That's storing every photo. That's storing everything. And like I said, even if they tell you that they've got that stuff turned off, well, should I say, even though you think you've got that stuff turned off on your phone, they're still storing it. And like I said, it just consumes a colossal amount of energy. Oh, and the other one. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot about this. The largest amount, the single chunk of electricity, the single largest chunk of electricity that is used in these data storage facilities is for not running the servers to store the actual data. It's for the cooling of the servers. I didn't even, th didn't even think about this. These massive, massive, massive servers are all water-cooled. So they're consuming a colossal amount of water. There's this one storage facility in Arizona, just outside of Phoenix. It goes through billions of gallons of water a week, where the water is, is taken out of the system, pumped through this, this machine or these servers, and then just dropped back out into whatever river or whatever it is. I, I don't know. But it's not like it, it gets pumped from the, the water supply through these facilities and then filtered or what have you and then put back into the system. No, it, it literally just gets dumped back out into whatever supply there is, wherever it is. But they're literally utilizing billions of gallons of water and it, the, to run the hydro pumps and everything to just cool these facilities utilizes roughly around 46% of power. So all these massive, massive, massive data storage facilities throughout just not the United States, but the rest of the world 
are all they're all utilizing the same same energy there's not one single solar wind power grid out there that can keep one of these facilities running not a one not a one so this 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 stuff is really going to start affecting how you and I live between now and 2030 and then from 2030 on it's only just going to get worse and worse and worse so it's, it's something that I'm not doing this video to scaremonger or anything like that I'm doing this video to bring this stuff to people's attention so then possibly people can bring this to the attention of of your local leaders your local state representatives whatever because honestly this is a massive elephant in the room and even the greenies the screaming greenies need to realize that this is a serious is genuinely a serious issue and wind solar and all these other technologies they're not going to cut it there's only one technology that can cut cut it and that's nuke that's nuclear power stations it's the only way that you're going to be able to produce the electricity that we need to keep this whole system running that we've got currently so the reality is the countries that are putting in nuclear power plants and going that way they're going to end up becoming the the future powerhouses economically of the world so yeah just give that some some thought because i've certainly given it some thought it's it's affecting how i look at my future and my family's future moving forward ever since that individual told told me that information so I will talk to you guys later. All right. Cheers.